This is the child who's tapping the pen, thumping his leg, touching the child, touching the crayons into everything. One of the most respected child advocates and leaders in the field of post-adoption care today is Dr. Karen Purvis, director of the Institute of Child Development at Texas Christian University. As a developmental psychologist and best-selling author, mother and grandmother, Dr. Purvis has devoted her life to educating parents and helping children. For several decades, we have understood what is called the attachment cycle. And what it says is that a baby cries and a caregiver comes. And a baby cries and a caregiver comes. It happens if you think about it hundreds of thousands of times in the earliest years of life. This baby cries and the caregiver comes and the child learns that their needs are going to be met so they learn trust, which is the lesson of the first year of life. I can trust. <laughs> Attachment is an affectionate bond between a caregiver and a youngster, a child, an infant. It's the bond that tells that child they're safe, that their needs matter, that they are precious. And in that attachment bond, the caregiver acts as the external modem for all the child's needs. <laughs> the attachment bond is about yeah. optimal development for every child. While it's essential for every child, the child who has come from a hard place with a history of trauma or loss or abuse has no hope of healing without a nurturing, caring, attachment relationship. That's a sobering reality, but there is reason for hope. Just as neuroscientists have documented how trauma harms the brain, research shows that the right kind of nurturing can help heal the brain. The way we communicate with a child actually can stimulate the growth of certain areas of that child's brain that help them regulate things like emotion and attention and even how they come to understand themselves and understand others. So whether you're a parent who has been a part of giving birth to a child or even an adoptive or foster parent, you are the biological parent of this child because the communication patterns you offer, the way you connect with your child, the way you have a relationship with your child, actually stimulates the firing of particular patterns in the brain that then get the brain to grow in specific ways so that it becomes a biological reality how your relationship changes the structure of your child's brain. Most parents are not aware of their own attachment style. Matter of fact, we think that's past and gone, it's behind us. But in reality, every one of us speaks some words we heard spoken, do some things to our children that were done to us. Every one of us has unconscious parenting strategies that when we become reflective and insightful, very likely there are some of those strategies that we will choose to release and let go of so that we can be most effective with our own. Here you go, Kate. For many parents, this is brand new information. Come on in. We're trying as hard as we can to get through to our children and address their behavior in ways they can comprehend. And yet, especially with children from hard places, we're not getting through. By looking at ourselves and making sense of our own past, we can break cycles of behavior and learn new methods of interacting. One place to start is the adult attachment interview. What big dog would you have, Miles? I want to have a husky. Michael and his wife Amy say learning about attachment motivated them to change the way they parented. One of my boys, because I've got one who's prone to some real volatile eruptions of emotion. His feelings oftentimes were driving my feelings. So here's a child who has a, a difficult time regulating his emotions, especially when things don't go his way. And so he would blow up. And because I wasn't aware of what was going on with me, I would blow up. So rather than being one to help him calm down and bring everything under control, I'm actually adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. 
tell her how close you came. Dr. Siegel says these insights can benefit every parent. First of all, as a clinician and a researcher, I wanted to learn how to do that research on the adult attachment interview. But as a parent at the same time, I thought I better really do some serious inner reflection so that I don't pass on what happened to me in my past to my child. So here's the real question every parent can ask themselves. Do I love my child enough to take the journey to look inward at what might be very painful so that I can liberate myself from the past and allow my child to have the secure attachment that I long to have had? That's the question each of us as a parent needs to ask. So people need to know that there's a huge amount of science behind the importance of a relationship a parent or any other caregiver has with a child. You know, relationships are brain food. All the scientific studies of happiness, longevity, and health point to relationships as the common feature. Relationships, relationships, relationships. This is powerful news for adoptive parents. This insight was a huge aha moment for these parents and triggered them to radically change how they parented their kids. As you look at attachment, you begin to find out that, that the way I interact with my children in the moment, moment by moment, day by day, can actually begin to change their brain development. That was kind of the, 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 the cure, if you will, to the harm and the trauma that, that really every adopted and foster child has experienced. There is no adoption in foster care without loss. There is no adoption in foster care without something having gone wrong in the past. So sometimes parents who've adopted kids or taken them into foster care come to me and say, well, I'm not the biological parent. And I quickly say to them, you know something? The relationship experiences you're providing for your child are influencing the biology of the brain. The kinds of ways we communicate with our child, the environment that we create, all those things literally shape the structure of the brain. And I don't know anything more biological than that. We make cookies. So you are, I say to them, the biological parent because you're shaping the biology of your child's brain. Oh my God.